folks over at ZBanks were kind enough to send this over for me to share with you guys. I did not pay anything for this. I'm not receiving any money for the review. The LaserMaster 3 has two five and a half watt laser diodes that get combined into a 10 watt laser beam coming out the tip here. It has a 400 millimeter X direction travel. That's 15.7 inches. And it has a 400 millimeter Y direction travel. That's 15.7 inches. It has sensorless homing against hard stops. It has no limit switches. It has a really beautiful color of extruded aluminum frame. These are heavier extrusions than other open frame machines that I've seen, yielding a much stiffer tool head. That also allows them to get up to 20,000 millimeters per minute scanning side to side. So this laser head moves back and forth very fast. This 10 watt laser can do raster engraving and cutting. It has Wi-Fi communication, app control, and full light burn compatibility, as well as standard laser gerbil. Powering on the device is as simple as holding down the power button. Once it starts blinking, it should self-home. Evidenced by a blue blinking button and this automatically moving. To turn it off, you just hold down the power button and it fades away. Now it's off. The axes are constrained by V-groove rollers behind these covers in both the X and the Y axes. The axes are driven by timing belts. There's a toggle switch for a rotary attachment. Beside the interface ports, there is an SD card slot, which I have not used because I control it directly through Lightburn. There's also a boot and reset button there for manual control. The laser head is easily removable and the shield is also removable for easy service. This is an open frame laser, more specifically classified as a class four laser, which means that this laser is not enclosed. And if I wanted to right now, I could take this off while it's running and shine this at somebody or myself and do very permanent, very painful damage to somebody. So there is a certain amount of safety respect that needs to be taken with these machines. You should definitely only be using it as an adult and you should only be using it as the only person in the room. You should be doing it in a well ventilated location, especially if you don't have an enclosure, which is an accessory that's available for these that will allow you to exhaust the air out a window. Also making them a little bit safer as they're enclosed. Plenty of smoke is generated by a machine like this. Some of it is kind of okay, not really great. Some of it is very bad. So you need to know exactly what you're cutting and if it's compatible with laser cutting and if it's compatible with the wavelength of the laser too. Some of the additional safety features include tilt sensors, pan sensors, e-stop and e-stop reset, key enabler, protective shield, protective glasses, and your own head. I was doing testing here and I was having problems with these pieces for the box. There's the worst side. The problem I was having is this line and this line should be collinear, so they should be the same line, but instead this one is a millimeter off. I also cut a a perfectly normal square. It should have been 20 by 20 millimeters. Instead it was 19.7, which is fine, by 18.7. So it had a millimeter of slop and backlash somewhere. I have taken this belt off of the, the tooth grabber for the carriage and I noticed that the belt pulley on this side is not attached. I mean, obviously it's there, but the, the pulley is the set screw is loose. Okay, I have tightened up both set screws in this pulley. Uh, so each pulley actually has two set screws and there's a coupler in the middle here. You can see that. So it's one motor in the middle with a shaft running to both sides. It's a perfectly fine design for this. There shouldn't be any tool head forces and it's equal length. So I don't see any problem with that design, but uh, the set screws do need to be properly torqued and maybe thread locked 
as an improvement. I think I have the belts clocked in properly, like both carriage ends were at the stops when I put the belt back on the tooth part. Uh, this is a extruded cover that just slips in. And then there's an end cap here that goes on. Pretty easy, all things considered, to uh, fix that. As long as you know what to look for. A valid point that I want to make that this type of laser is not for a very casual person. I should also point out that the set screws for the pulleys were not a size included in the toolkit of uh, Allen wrench. My first test with a uh, box cutout program. I hope it worked. A pretty good cut through. Looks like I could have done a little bit more passes. I just showed this getting cut out and this laser is not really meant to cut. Uh, this is half inch plywood. It's not really even like a laser plywood. Diode lasers don't do well cutting this. You need a lot of air. You have to go really slow. You have to do multiple passes. Uh, ultimately, it just it takes too long to cut out anything of a reasonable size of this thickness on this type of laser. So I quickly discovered that even though the cut quality was really good. I mean, look at that. So I moved on to cutting this stuff and it's it's not the common three millimeter laser ply. Laser ply is usually like three millimeters. So this is uh, 0.174 inches thick. It cut much better. Still a little bit slow, but with successful results. And with that, I was able to get these pumpkin kits, which is just a common SVG generated by a website. It's a box. And then I add my own design on the front of it. And then inside there is a, just a battery powered tea candle. Cause you know, this is wood and wood and fire don't go well together. And the fit on this lid is just, it's really good. This is one of the first ones that I did. It's not as good because some doofus forgot to put in the correct thickness. Now we're getting somewhere. And the really cool thing is the tolerance and squareness is so good that not just that side, but this side. You know, it just fits on perfect in all orientations. That's really good tolerance. And then one more on this other side. And there. That's a box that has protruding edges because I'm a doofus. I had also tried cutting this cork. Uh, you see it gets kind of burny. This cork is, uh, this cork is fairly thick and I quickly discovered while trying to cut it out that it only wants to cut so deep. No matter what I do, it only cuts so deep. And I, in no cases could I break through even with multiple passes, multiple attempts, going very slow, air assist, just could not cut through this cork. I imagine thinner cork, cork that is well, about that thick, would be okay. This is not as easy to see. This took many passes in vector mode, but it's the rock, kind of like the other rock that you saw in the opening scene but this is the first one I did. It's uh, If you're doing engraving on rocks, try to pick something that doesn't have like a texture, something that's a very flat color. That way anything that you grave, engrave in it will look like something instead of this, which just kinda is maybe, if you look at it hard enough, it's a rock rock. This is in general a very well engineered machine, but I think the engineers stopped once they got to cable management. And that does bug me a little bit. So these cables, well, there's a 
The main power cable for the, the laser head, that's, that's fine. And then this is the air assist hose. Those are just zip tied. Now I did this, you have to do this yourself when you set it up. These are just zip tied to the back of the gantry, which then get zip tied here. And there's a mounting bracket intended to zip tie this other piece of control wire, which is just kind of flopping kind of how you do in there, which then runs up underneath, up underneath the machine here. So the machine has provisions for air assist. It includes this flow regulator valve, which is not really a flow regulator valve, it's just a little uh, needle valve to restrict it down. That, you can run a smaller compressor. This is a compressor that I had laying around. This is a gassed air compressor. And it only does low pressures, which is actually, quite frankly, really good for this. Because if you try to put full power of an air compressor through this hose, it will blow apart on you. Ask me how I know. So you want to have a regulated output. Most compressors have a pressure regulator and you want to have it regulated down ooh, below 20 PSI, I'd say. Uh, and at least my pancake comp compressor here did not work so great with that. The smaller compressor worked a lot better with that. You can buy similar compressors on eBay for 50 to 100 bucks. I do not know what size is appropriate for this. I have bought a $50, 50 watt compressor and we'll see how that goes. If it's good, I guess I'll have a link down there. When doing any sort of cutting, you do need a proper cutting tray. This is a baking sheet that I got at Walmart. It is not quite exactly the correct way to do it, but it does work in a pinch. There's a dedicated engraving tray that Porcher sells as well. Well, everybody, thanks for joining me on this review process. One thing that really impressed me is how accurate and precise this was to do such tight tolerances for things like boxes. I still find this really impressive as to how snug this fits and how interchangeable it is because it's just, it's square and it's the right dimensions. And whenever you're doing something that's, you're trying to do precision work, that ability cannot be understated. So if you were looking to start with this for a laser engraving business or laser cutting business, I wouldn't hesitate. It, it would do the job. But there are some things that you might need to address to make this a safer, more pleasant experience. There's three things that I would say are almost absolutely necessary. You need an enclosure to keep the smoke in and to keep the laser from getting out into your eyes. So you don't have to wear orange glasses all the time. You really need the engraving platform. You can cut without the platform, but it makes things so much easier and you get less burning on the opposite side. The final thing is you need a compressor because it, it just cuts and it engraves so much cleaner without any smoke residue with compressor. I almost wouldn't recommend running this without one to begin with. And finally, for profitable things, doing tumblers and water bottles with a rotary roller plugged in back here. The problem with that is you would need something to lift this up and they do sell legs. So if you get the, the roller, you probably want the legs too to lift this up to actually fit things underneath the laser head. This took about one hour to do. I used Lightburn to trace in these graphics, which is really nice because I don't have to go find a very specific SVG file with these graphics. I can just find any picture, trace them in Lightburn, and there you go, Bob's your uncle. And this took me about an hour. It would have taken less time if I didn't set accidentally the speed on this engraving so slow because there's depth to those engravings. So you can very easily paint this, you know, fill this with paint and then sand off the surface to get just painted letters and a natural wood surface on the top. One more thing that you'll finally need to purchase is a license of light burn. It's only 60 bucks. It's a lifetime license and that includes one year of updates. So I think that's actually a really good deal, if only for the vector tracing features. 
All right. I'm sure I've missed something or gotten something wrong. And in the case that I did, there will be a correction or additional comments in the description and the first comment. If there are any active promotions, a link to that promotion will also be down there. Overall, I do recommend it, but you're probably looking at spending a little bit more money to, to do everything that you need to. And that's all I have to say about that. Goodbye.